This video is going to focus on rational functions and graphs. And one of the things you should recognize about rational functions and their graphs is that they all have asymptotes. And this is what you can expect when you graph them. You will notice that we have some vertical asymptotes in all of these. And you're always going to get at least one, at least typically. It is rare that you won't have one. But uh, with horizontal, well, you won't have more than one. Sometimes you may get a slant, like this one on the right, instead of a horizontal asymptote. But in either case, one is the most that you will get. Now, because of the fact that these are functions, all of these must pass the vertical line test, which means this. You see a curve that's above this horizontal asymptote. Here you have a curve below. Here there's one above. Here there's below. Here it's above you won't have an occasion where it's both above and below. Another thing you should recognize is that these curves tend to hug the asymptotes, meaning that from very little information, you'll be able to sketch these with some pretty good accuracy. The equations will essentially be two different polynomials. The denominator will be some function of x and the top can actually just be a number or we can have variables or uh, whatever but the bottom there's always going to be at least one variable x the degree of the bottom usually indicates how many hor how many vertical asymptotes there are let's say we were going to graph this one for example the steps that you'll want to follow is first determine those vertical asymptotes the way you determine that is by taking the denominator setting it equal to zero and then solving for x. So we have x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Add 4 to both sides and square root. And we get x equals plus or minus 2. Let's go ahead and graph those lines. Recall that when it just says x equals, that's a line that only crosses the x-axis. So we've got two of them. Now you should recognize that that cuts the coordinate plane into three regions. Now the next step that we want to do is we want to figure out what the horizontal or the slanted asymptote will be. And the way we figure that out is by taking the numerator and dividing it by the denominator. There is a shortcut though. If you compare the two degrees, we can also get an idea of whether or not it even divides at all. If the top degree is smaller than the bottom degree, then what happens is it doesn't divide at all it goes in zero times. So we say y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote. If on the other hand the two degrees are equal, like we have in this situation, just simply take the ratio of their leading coefficients and that would be the equation of the horizontal uh, asymptote. If neither of these conditions exist, that means that the numerator on top has a higher degree than the one on the bottom, which means you're gonna get an asymptote that is slanted and you will have no choice but to divide it through your answer, the quotient, would be the equation of that asymptote. So y equals 3. Okay, now the third step is that now we need to plug in a point for each region to see whether or not the graph is going to lie above the horizontal asymptote or below. How about we test in this region first? This requires an old-fashioned t-chart, and just like you learned when you first learned how to graph, we're going to be plugging in a few points. A point in this region that we want to try is anything that is west of this asymptote, so whether it be negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, even negative pi if that thrills you. Let's try negative 3. If we plug in negative 3 into x on top and x on the bottom, calculate, we would get... 27 fifths, which is roughly 5.4. So let's go ahead and graph that point. Notice this point lies above this horizontal asymptote, which means we will get a curve that is above this asymptote, a curve that's going to hug these two. There we are. Let's do the same for this middle region and also for this region on the right-hand side. Let's do this region on the right-hand first. Again, choose any number that is east of this asymptote. 
whether it be three, four, five, six, even a thousand, as long as you're somewhere in that region. I'll choose three. Plug in three and we get the same answer. Of course, I kind of knew that would happen. That's probably why I chose three. Notice the location of the point is above this horizontal asymptote, which means again that the curve is going to be hugging this side. Two regions down. Now for just one more. For this middle region, we want to again test by choosing a point between negative two and two this time to see if it lies above or below the asymptote. However, you should know that sometimes in the middle you can get some rather funny curves. It is possible, for example, to be somewhat U-shaped like this or to be U-shaped going the other way. But there also exists another possibility. It could possibly, we could possibly have a point that is on this asymptote, which would signal that the graph kind of goes through in an S shape like this. Or, better yet, from here to here. And I didn't draw that right, let's try again. It could go all the way down like so. So because of that, we want to test for that. And what we'll do then is we'll choose to see we'll, we'll choose a point to see if it's going to land up right there in the middle. In other words, we're going to choose zero. Plug in zero, and you get zero. So that kind of confirms it for us. At zero zero, it's highly unlikely it's going to be going through this. But uh, to make doubly sure, why don't we do one more? Plug in negative one, and we get negative one. Okay, I think that about confirms it. So what we're going to get is a U-shaped that is opening downward. And that does it for this one. For this next example, you're gonna, we're going to have one that has a hole in the graph. So take g of x here, x plus 3 over x squared plus 3x. We're going to again follow our steps, determining vertical asymptote first, horizontal or slanted asymptote second by dividing and then choosing points to plug in to test the different regions. Please note the denominator does factor. It gives us x times the quantity x plus 3. And giving us that, that allows us to actually reduce out the x plus 3's. They become 1 and 1. Therefore, what we wind up with is 1 over x. Let's get our vertical asymptotes first. Please note the degree here is 1, therefore expect only one vertical asymptote. Setting the bottom equal to 0, and we get x equals 0. Okay, so x equals 0, that's a vertical asymptote that crosses through 0 on the x-axis. Keep in mind, though, that in the beginning we still had this x plus 3 that reduced out, and we'll come back to that later on. Now for the horizontal or slanted asymptotes, we take the top and divide by the bottom. Since the degree on top is smaller than the one on the bottom, that means that it doesn't divide in at all. In other words, it divides in zero times. So that's the quotient, and y equals zero is what we graph. Okay, so now what we have is we have two regions. Region on the left, region on the right. We want again to determine if we're going to get a curve that's above or below this asymptote. Same thing on this region here. Will it be above or below? Let's test this region on the left first. We have our t-chart. A number in this region that we can pick, remember, anything west of the asymptote would work. I'll choose negative 1. So 1 over negative 1 gives us negative 1. So let's go ahead and plot that point. Note that this point falls below the asymptote. Therefore, our graph is going to be below the asymptote. And there we are. Okay, let's do the same thing and test this region on the right-hand side. Again, we'll try and choose a number to plug in. How about we choose 1 this time? If you plug in 1, we get 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. So let's go ahead and graph that point. Note the location is above this horizontal asymptote, so that's where our curve is going to be. I again want to drive home the point that this curve is going to hug the two asymptotes. So there we are. And now, normally we would be done, except now we have to account for the fact that in the beginning, 
we had this x plus 3. It's important to understand that in the beginning we had x squared, which implied that we have two asymptotes, but the fact that it something reduced out means that we only wound up with one asymptote. However, the fact that you had x plus 3 tells us x could not be negative 3. So no matter what, we have to have a hole in the graph somewhere, or at least some kind of discontinuity where the x coordinates negative 3. So what you do is this. On the graph, locate where the x value is negative 3, which is around here. And what you're going to do is you're going to punch a hole in the graph. And that's how you do it. You just simply put an open circle right there. You should understand that you'll get a hole in the graph only if you have to reduce the fraction at all. If you didn't have to reduce the fraction, it's not something that you have to worry about. But otherwise, there will be a hole in the graph. And the number of holes in the graph will be equivalent to the number of uh, re reductions that you had to do. Here we only had to do one reduction. Okay, let's do one with a slanted asymptote. You'll know this is a slanted asymptote immediately because the degree on top is larger than the one on the bottom. More on that later. Let's first worry about the steps in going through with the vertical asymptotes first. If you set the denominator equal to, to 0, you get x minus 1 is 0, which means x would equal to 1. Okay, so there it is. Now let's worry about the next step, the division part, when you determine whether or not the asymptote is horizontal or slanted. A reminder that you're comparing the degrees. If the degree on top is smaller than the bottom, y is 0, because it divides in 0 times. If the degrees are the same, you simply take the ratios of the leading coefficients. But in this case, since the top it has a larger degree, you're going to have to take the top and divide it through. Whatever your answer is for the quotient, that'll be the equation of the asymptote. That's the numerator. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually just use synthetic division. That's perfectly fine since the divisor there has a degree of 1. And the number that goes here is going to be what we had for our asymptote x equals 1. So it'll be 2 plus nothing, which is 2, then times the 1, then add, then times, and then the remainder. Now you'll notice that I'm not even bothering to write the remainder because the remainder is unimportant here. What matters is the quotient. Recall that the degree of the quotient is going to be 1 less than the numerator. So y equals 2x plus 2 is the equation of that asymptote, where the slope is 2 and the y-intercept is 2. Let's go ahead and graph that. The guidelines for graphing this is nothing fancy. Hopefully you all understand how to graph a line in which the slope is 2 over 1 and the y-intercept is 2. Okay, let's test the regions. We'll start with this region on the left first. That's to the left of the asymptote. Get out your table. And how about we try 0? If you plug in 0 into this equation, h of 0 would give us negative 1. So let's go ahead and graph that point. All right, our point is below this, this, uh, this slanted asymptote. Therefore, our graph is going to be below this. And mission accomplished for this region. Let's test this region to see if it is above or below the asymptote. I'll plug in a value that is greater than 1. How about 2? Plugging in 2 for x, h of 2 would give us 9, which is way up there on my graph. Still, it's enough to tell us where it is in relation to the asymptotes. It's above them, therefore our curve is going to be above. And that finishes that off. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.